I seminar today at the Carnegie Lake Bark Park, and the name of the seminar is My Dog is Driving Me Crazy. And we know that a lot of people have issues with their dogs and their puppies and even their older dogs. And Robin Peterson, a very good friend of mine who does therapy work with me and also is the person who owns Red Ball Academy, Dog Academy. Red Ball Dog Academy. Academy. I got it right. <laughs> is here and she's going to be giving you a lot of information. So sit back, relax, have some coffee and donuts and enjoy the seminar. All right, well good morning everybody. It is a cold morning out there again. Um, Sue always gets me out on these cold mornings. I, I really would be like you home in baggy clothes with a nice hot drink curled up on the couch with my dogs. Um, but some days uh, you can't do that because your dogs don't let you do that. Um, this is Sicily. We'll, we'll just do introductions right away. This is Sicily, and she is a year old, um, just a year in November, and she is my problem child. I brought her come here, because if I had brought her mom, who is much better trained than her, um, people can sometimes, Sicily, sit. Yes, good girl. That's very nice. People can sometimes get discouraged. So if you see that I have a problem and I have work um, and my dog does some of the things that your dogs do, uh, you um, sometimes can be a little bit more um, motivated and see that there's light at the end of the tunnel and um, off. Um, have a little bit more hope. So this is Sicily and she came with me today to show you some things you will um, be able to see just how much energy she has and I don't always get to sit on that couch and relax because she does not let me. She is trained to ring a bell when she needs to go outside. She could work for the Salvation Army. <laughs> she will ring the bell when she doesn't buff, when she doesn't need to go outside. So the rule is, if you ring the bell, guess what? You go outside whether you want to or not. Otherwise, you know, she rings the bell to get me to go to her. It's negative attention, just like children sometimes want negative attention. They will take any kind of attention that they can get. So we are constantly trying to redirect her attention and get her to do the positive things that we want, um, just like you will do with your dogs. I have my treat pouch on. Does everybody see my treat pouch? My treat pouch is um, assigned to her. Hello, come on in, have a seat. Assigned to her that we're going to um, work today and do some things, and it makes her twice as enthusiastic and gives her much, much more energy. And she's going to go with Sue to go outside to potty before we go much further. So, or she can go smell. Okay, else. here, you might, you might need these just because so she don't pull. Okay. All right, so there's a notebook that's being passed around for you guys to write down problems that you're having or questions that you would like answered. I don't know that I have all the answers. Um, it's, it is always, I'm always learning. It's always revolving. Each dog that I get teaches me something else. God is very good to me by giving me challenges in my dogs to help me with other people with their issues. Um, she's going to be one of those challenges for me. So as that notebook comes around, if you put your questions on it, then we can go ahead and address them. One of the biggest problems we run into this time of year with our dogs and them acting up, it all boils down to the fact that they're bored, that they, they don't have anything to do, they're not getting enough exercise. When they're not getting enough exercise, they find things to get into and they drive us crazy. And we want to put a free sign out front and put them next to it. So you have to find ways to stimulate them. You have to find ways to keep them active. I'm not a winter person. If I were allowed to, I would go inside my house the end of December and I would hibernate and not come back out till April. I don't like anything about it. I am a little bit spoiled because I have a fenced in yard. I can open the door and let them out. I don't have to go out there with them. My hat's off to those two people who live in a place where they have to walk their dog every day. Good for you. 
I, I open the door and go out there. I'm, it's too cold. I'm not going out there. Um, but it also requires more work from me because they want me to interact with them. So there are things that I will do inside my house to help stimulate them that wears them out. Mental stimulation works almost as well, if not better sometimes, than physical stimulation. How many of you work in a job that can be mentally taxing? And when you come home, you're more tired than you were if you would have tossed rocks all day long because your brain is exhausted. We can work their brains this time of year. And you can do things with... There's interactive puzzles out there that you can buy, or you can make one. This is a homemade one. This is an old muffin tin. You can see it's like rusty old muffin tin. These are dollar store tennis balls that don't bounce. Don't ever buy dollar store tennis balls for your dog they don't bounce. But for this, they're wonderful. You can take and put treats underneath here in different places. Now, this one is portable. I take it with me places. Um, if I were to leave this at home, I would have my husband put screws through this and put it on a piece of plywood so that they can't flip it. Um, however, I take this with me so Cicely can come and show you. Cicely, come. Don't find this in here. Here, come here. Don't find it. So the treats are under here. And she has to remove the balls to try to get the treats. Now, it looks easy, but it is not as easy as you think to get those balls out of there. So not everyone has a treat underneath it. When you do it at home, you can put treats underneath everyone. But just for time allowances, I'm not going to put a treat under everyone. And she's a little, she's a little stage shy. Um, so she's going to work to get those. Uh, balls out of there to get those treats. It works their brain. It gives them something to do. You have to hold the tin down because you'll get the real smart ones who will just take their paw and flip it. And then they eat all the treats and it's done. So you have to hold it down so that they can work on it. The very first time her mother played this game, she took the center ball out with her mouth and then rolled the other balls towards the center with her nose, just like you would play that game at Cracker Barrel. So this is something that you can do that stimulates them and helps them. Another game that we play in our house, you are just not eating these. Here. I know why you're not eating these. I made the mistake of making my own treats the other day. Not a mistake. You, might got, you guys might want to um, put this to memory. A cup and a half of rolled oats and two jars of baby food. Okay. Uh, none, none that has onion powder or garlic in it, OK? So it can be blueberry, can be sweet potato and chicken, can be um, any combination. Banana is good. Sweet potato they like. Blueberry they like. Two jars. Two, two normal jars of baby food. What was the first part? Two cups of? A cup and a half of rolled oats two regular jars of baby food. Put the rolled oats in a food processor and grind them up. Mix the baby food in with them. And then bake them for 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the size that you make them. They come out looking a little like this. Easy peasy. Like, take less than five minutes to mix them up. Throw them in the oven while you're doing other things. These are sweet potato. These are blueberry. And they absolutely love them. Look at those ones you snushed on the floor. Here, you go over there and eat those. So now, that's what they want. There you go. You stay in there for a minute. Do you ever have problems so, with their poop and stuff like that when you make your own piece? No. Not yet. I mean, I'm, I'm very controlled. I give my dogs the exact same things every day, all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm always hesitant to add something to their diet for fear that we're going to have an explosion somewhere. Remember that, well, oats are bulk. Yeah, oats are bulk, so they're fiber, so they're not going to cause you hush. 
you hush. Best training tool in the world, who has one? Three or four. <laughs> Three or four, five or six. For those of you that don't know, this is white vinegar and water. White vinegar and water, you may dilute it to your own liking. At home, I use it 50-50. At school, I use it 75-25 because I need it for all sorts of things at school, including breaking up a dogfight. You put it on stream, not spray. You don't want to mist them. You don't want them to think they're at the spa. This is a correction. Corrections are not meant to be pleasant. When you put it on stream, hush. When you put it on stream and you squirt them, it gets their attention. It does not hurt them. It does not hurt them in any way. It will not hurt their eyes. It doesn't hurt anything around them. It doesn't hurt anything in your house. I'm a really bad shot. I will aim for her and probably hit something over there. It'll clean your windows. <laughs> exactly, because it's vinegar. We use it to clean with. I aim for them and hit my husband, and then it's a double bonus. <laughs> Do you say it's a man when you do it or not? Depends on what. Now she's whining and I'm telling her, hush. She whines again, I'm going to squirt her. If they're in the garbage, it's no. If they're jumping up on you, it's off. So yes, it's a command when you when they're doing whatever you say behavior. A when you're I will say I will say hush yeah. as as I deliver the spray. They get to the point where they learn to respect this bottle. You can put it down in a room and they'll make a wide circle around it. You pick it up and your older, like if you have a young dog that's learning, you pick this up and your older dog goes, I wasn't doing anything. And they walk away. It can be empty after a while. It can be empty after a while, yes. Honestly, there's no, there's no, and it's wonderful. If you go to Tractor Supply, although they're out and they're supposed to be getting them next week, they have a bottle called an upside down bottle that you can spray upside down even, it has a range that I could reach clear across this room, and that's the bottle I use in dog school. Um, they're out. I sent students there, and they said they're back ordered, and they should have them in this week. You find them in the horse section. It's blue writing on the bottle. It says upside down bottle. Delaware General has one. It's like that for a buck. Yeah. This, this, one's pre this one's pretty good, but after a while, this is going to wear out. That, that upside down bottle I've had for years. So it's well worth the investment. I think it's like $4 for that bottle. And these are a dollar, I throw them in my car. I love that upside down bottle. Um, so this works for many things. But remember, if your dog is a jumper, how many have jumpers? We love them, don't we? It drives us crazy. If your dog's a jumper, you can use this off but if you don't do anything after that the dog is going to revert back hush the the dog is going this is not set on my stream the way i want it to be it gets messed up in my car that's better um, the dog is going to revert back to jumping so when you give your dog a command to stop a behavior if you replace it with a positive behavior it gives their brain something else to switch to, and then they can do it right. So if she jumps on me, I'm going to tell her off. Now sit. Yes, that's a good girl. Oh, good girl. Good girl, sit. You want a cookie? I can't eat cookies. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm, I'm nervous. He's got a camera back there. She's camera shy. So if you replace the behavior, with something different for them to think about, that negative behavior will go away quicker. If you just tell them off, they will for a split second, but they're gonna go right back to doing it unless you change their thinking to something different. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. They need jobs. Most of our dogs need jobs to do. So I'm gonna go around the room and I'm just gonna ask you what kind of dog you have, and we'll start right here. I've got a mutt that I rescued. It's supposedly a uh, German Shepherd Terrier, but I don't see either breed. <laughs> okay. Um, how about in behavior do you see those breeds? Not really. Okay. Okay, so what, what are you thinking you have? I'm not sure. Okay. I've got a nice dog. <laughs> Good. Good. Um, 
would help if we keep this thing running. We'll just watch our watch. Technology is not always my friend. Okay, what about you? What do you have? Excuse me, German Shepherd and an Australian Shepherd. Okay. I mean, two dogs. Two dogs. Herding. Both herding dogs. Okay. Natural. Yes. One is, is the newest one is giving me a problem. Is um, Yellow Lab and Catalog. And she is the one with jumping. And as good as all the other ones were, now they're all, they're all jumping. Yes. And licking. Oh, yes. And licking, it's like, oh. Yes. yes. It, I don't understand why they can't learn the good things. They all have to pick up the bad behavior. Well, I have to get a spray bottle with me now, because when I go out the gate and leave in the morning, I have to have that in my hand when I come home, because they're all at the fence and right. jumping on me. Right. Yes. I understand. We'll talk about that in a minute. OK. How about you? I've got the form of Bill Brown. You. Yes. Got it. Yep. Remember. Okay, heard of the dog also, but you have experience with Robbie's. Yeah, so we have a 10 year old too. That's helpful. Okay. And I don't have one right now. I had to put mine down six months ago. I know, it's been rough. But I'm thinking possibly again. Yeah. yeah good for you. When the time's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, you have the Yorkie, right? Little, tiny, and busy. <laughs> I have three dogs, um, seven year old lab. Uh, Five-year-old Labradoodle and a three-year-old three-legged terrier mix. Mm -hmm. My pop tart. <laughs> I have a two-year-old Labradoodle. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So your dogs, as I fall over the crate, your dogs are very much who they have bred, been bred to be, or or um, whatever their genetics are. Herding dogs love to, excuse me, she didn't, you're a pest. Um, herding dogs like to do exactly that. There's a lot of times with puppies, they like to nip at heels or they like to gather children. They like to do those types of things. Terriers should be translated into terror, hush should be, see the threat of it sometimes is all you need. She'll go back to whining in a few minutes. Goldens need to be right next to their people, like Velcro dogs and touching, and there's space here. She, she is not, yeah, she's not a crate puppy. When I put her crates away, she'll be very, very happy, although I'll have to tell her mother to get out of it before I can fold it up and put it away because her mom likes a crate. She really could care less about one, but hasn't quite earned the total privilege of not being in a crate. Can you break that habit because this new dog now, and I think it's because of all the other dogs I have, she's the one that follows me around now, and I turn around and she's like right there. I don't even hear her coming in. You, you want to break the habit of her being right next to you all well, the time? Yeah, to the point where if I'm trying to move in the kitchen, she gets up, she moves over two feet. She gets up, she moves over two feet. Like Ella vacuums with me. <laughs> Do you ever try to vacuum in a small space? Uh, we, we downsized and built a smaller house. Up with the vacuum cleaner, back with the vacuum cleaner. Dog goes up, dog goes back. Irritating. Yes. I, I can't get done. There's an exercise called send to the mat. Oh, we will teach yeah. her to go to the mat. You know, you, have, you know those steps. Teach her to go to the mat. I send her to the mat. She goes to the mat. She lies down. I can vacuum my living room in half the time. To teach your dogs to go to a mat or a place, this is a wonderful exercise. How many of you have dogs who rush the door when somebody comes? And they can't get in the door because the dogs are, and you're like, just a minute, and you're pulling dogs back so that people can come in the door. This exercise is wonderful to have people be able to come into your door. You get a mat. Um, this is my favorite mat. You're standing on it. How am I supposed to show people? Off. Off, 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 off. I'm not taking your belt. These are my favorite. You can get these online. You can get them at Tractor Supply. They roll up. Big Lots has them sometimes. That's cool. Um, they roll up very nice. You can throw them in the wash machine and then in the dryer. Ask Sue. I take mine 
um, to our therapy dog visit, like at Allegheny College, and she tells me I'm making my dog a sissy. But this is Linus's blanket. This is their security. That is their spot to go to. In the vet's office, I use it. When I go into the waiting room, go to your mat. I don't want my dog playing with those other dogs. I don't know if they're sick. Mm -hmm. So my dog goes to the mat, and she does not interact with those other dogs. It also is her security. It smells like home. It's comfortable to her. When I take my dogs to my parents' house, after they visit with my mom and dad for a while, and I want to sit down and have coffee with my parents, and I don't want my Goldens bug in me, because they will. They will sit right there and put their heads on my lap. Go to your mats. Go lay down at your mats. There's games I'm going to show you that help with that mental um, stimulation that we were talking about that involves go to your mat and lie down on your mat. To teach, go to the mat. It can be a rug. It can be a, it can be a place. I had a dog who didn't like beds or blankets. She had a spot behind my husband's chair. And that's where she would go. So the command would be, go to your mat, go to your spot. And they would go there and they lie down. To teach it, there's steps. To teach it, and of course, we need to know what motivates our dogs. Raise your hands if your dogs are food driven. Beautiful. Toy driven? Praise. Just praise. Well, it, treats work, but like only for so long. And okay. he gets enough and then he's not interested in it. Okay, so you have to find a higher value treat. Okay, dollar store hot dogs stink to high heaven. They love them because they're very smelly. Uh, some dogs will work for Cheerios. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a golden in one, my one class that will do anything for a Cheerio. String cheese, white string cheese is another good thing. These two treats, I'll show you these. I'm a person that if a treat is good, I'll pay $7 a bag for treats. That's really expensive. These treats are $2.98, and you find them at Walmart, and they are made in the United States, and they are good treats. These are peanut butter and chicken. I had a student bring these to class and open them up, and when they opened them up, this is truth. Every dog in the room stopped. <laughs> really? Every dog in the room stopped. I would never give a second glance to this bag. The packaging is not, it doesn't catch my eye. I asked her what she had and if I could please see it. I read the ingredients. These are nice ingredients. This is the other one I've been using for years. This is Vet Dogs. These are made by Bill Jack. You find these in the Meadville Walmart, bottom shelf, towards the food side of the treat aisle. They're right next to each other. $2.98 a bag and there's a lot in them. And you can, I'll pass them around in a minute so you can take pictures with cell phones or however to get them. Um, they are decent sized treats. Now, let me clarify, fat dogs are unhealthy dogs. And when you're training and you're working new um, exercises like send to the mat, you'll use a lot of treats. So you either cut back on their food or you make sure that, you, well, I always see that this is the vet dog. It's like a star. I get at least six exercises out of one of these because I break it. I break it into little pieces. This is the peanut butter one. You like this one? Yeah. This is the peanut butter one. I can get at least six out of this because I break it too. They don't need to be big pieces. They don't even chew them. They swallow it. It's just knowing that they got something in their mouth. So break them up into little pieces. The vet dog ones tend to get crummy. They make some crumbs. Um, that's the drawback to them. These peanut butter ones are really, really moist and don't make the crumbs as bad. When I'm teaching, I stick my hand in my treat bag and play with my treats, which is a bad habit because then I make lots of crumbs. Sit. Good girl. So you guys can pass these around. They're just economical, good, soft treats. Those ones that I told you about that you can make, I baked the blueberry ones yesterday for just 15 minutes. They're nice and soft. You have to keep them in the refrigerator. To me, that's the only drawback. But keep them in the refrigerator, and I'm going to try making them even smaller so that I can use them quicker. Um, when you're training, you want soft treats, not hard treats. You want treats that your dog can eat in a hurry 
because you're going to be tossing or, or feeding them quickly. If you give them hard treats, they have to stop and chew, and you don't want that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you got to give them a break to get, to get a drink, too. All right, so send to the map. Let's go back to that. If I get off task, just redirect me, because I can spin in a circle sometimes. Send to the map. You get your, this is going to kill me. You get your map or your spot or your, or your rug, whatever you want it to be. Uh, something small and portable is better than a big dog bed. I had a student bring a big dog bed to school this week. It's a mattress. Really, just, just something little is good, okay? Place it. Get your cookies out. Toss the cookie on the mat. Tell your dog, get it. And they're going to run to that mat to get that cookie. As soon as they get that cookie, call them off the mat. Because you want your boys to call them off the mat before they can step off the mat. So you're going to tell them, okay, or a different word if you want. Okay has been my release word for over 24 years. It's not a good release word. However, it works for me. My dogs know the tone. They know it comes from me. The problem with using okay is somebody comes in your door and you say, how are you today? And they say, okay. Does that release your dogs off your mat? Maybe. It has never for me. But I'm just putting that word of caution out there. You might want to say pickles. OK, so you could toss the treat. As soon as they eat it, you could say pickles. And your dog could come off. You do that four, five, six times. Toss the cookie. Get it, get it, get it. OK. Call them back. Yes, good job. Get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it, get it. OK. Yes, good job. You toss, toss, toss. Then you step towards the mat, but don't toss. You fake them out is what you're doing. Ah, your dog will probably run to the mat. <gasps> no cookie. They'll turn around and sit and look at you like, what the heck, where's my cookie? That's when you name it. That's when you put the name to the command. When they go to it by themselves and turn around and look at you, that's when you say, oh, good job, go to the mat. And you step in and you treat them. And then you call them off. If you need to motivate them more, hold them by the collar. Hold them back. Toss that cookie. Ready, 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 ready. Good, get it, gonna get it. And they'll be pulling on that collar. And then let them launch them. Let them go get it. Yes, good job. Pickles, call them back off. That's how you get them to go to it. Most of them, when they're looking for it, Sicily. Most of them, when they're, they're looking for it, will go to the mat, turn around, and sit down and look at you. Eventually, you're going to take that sit and turn it into a down. And you're going to ask them to down. They will go to their mat. Go to your mat. No, over here, go to your mat. Down. Down. You can do it inside a crate. You can. Go on, down. Not inside a crate. Different, huh? You can, you can get them to down on it and remain there until you give them that release word for them to come off of your mat. You can let your company in. If they're not a dog person, I'm not sure why you invite them. But if they're, not a dog, if they're not a dog person, your dog can remain calmly on their mat. What, say they're an insurance man. I don't even know if they make house calls anymore. But you can talk business and your dog remains on the mat. If they're my grandkids who put my dogs over the top, my grandkids can get in the house. My dogs can settle themselves down a little bit. Oh, they're here, they're here. And then I can release them off the mat to come play. So it's a great, it's a great, great exercise. Now, the other thing that I use send to the mat for, so I use it when somebody comes to the door and she's learning it. Mama's solid at it. She's learning it. Hush. I use send to the mat when I visit and I take my mat with me. I use send to the mat at the vet's office. 
But I also use Send to the Mat for some games. The game, one of the games that I use Send to the Mat for is this. This is a great toy. You can make one of these. This, is, this came from Kong, and I paid $11 for it. But you can make one. Um, it's a lot sturdier than I thought it was. Yeah. I've, I've seen that online. It's a lot sturdier than I thought it was. Yeah. Um, be careful, because some places I've looked, they want a whole lot more money than what I paid yeah. for it. But this one is Kong's, and it has, it has stretch to it. So this is, this is my husband's favorite toy. <laughs> He loves this toy. He sits in his lazy boy and doesn't move with this toy. All right, this is his favorite thing to do. So to play this, we'll, we'll, we'll do this on break with you. To play this, they have to go to their mat. They go to their mat, hush. She's not gonna be able to stand it. They go to their mat and they lie down. So that's the first obedience exercise that they need to make their brain do, is a down. They need to remain on the mat. Ooh, that's a weight. So that's the second thing their brain has to be working on. I have to down, I have to wait. The next one is leave it. They're not allowed to have it right away. And he torments them. He puts it on their head. He puts it in front of them. He says, leave it. And he does all this stuff with this. And they're, they're, they're there and they shake. So that's, that's the next thing they have to work is leave it. I know. And then he will say, OK. And they get off their mat and he lets them chase it. The whole time he sits in his chair. And he flips it all over the place. And they chase it around. And they chase it around. And they chase it around. And then one of them will grab it. One of them will get a hold of it and grab it. And once they do grab it and they catch it, he will tug on it a little bit with them. And then he will tell them that they have to give it to him. She said, she's Ella, gentle with Well, Ella usually, she's in an X pen and that makes it totally different for her. But Ella will usually catch it first. So once they catch it, then they have to give it to you. So there's the next thing that they have to work. I know it's fun off. Then they have to return to the mat and the game starts all over again. Break any of the rules once they learn them. You have to teach them the rules. Break any of the rules, the game is over. Completely dead stops right then and there. You get off your mat, game is done. You don't wait, game is done. You don't give it to me, game is done. You don't go back to your mat when I tell you to, after you've chased it and you've got it, game is done. This gets put in the closet and the door goes shut. I promise you, the next day you pull this out or the next time you pull this out, they don't break the rules. Now you cannot Expect them to follow the rules if they don't know the rules. You have to break it down into little slivers and teach it. How many of you have ever used a clicker or know what one is? OK. Um, anybody not know what a clicker is? Not sure how to use one? I've never used one. OK. This is a clicker of two different kinds. This is a quiet one. Not very noisy for dogs that are kind of sound sensitive. This is a box clicker. It's my favorite. <laughs> Louder. But some dogs are sound sensitive, and this one's better. All a clicker is is an audible marker that they've done something right. Sis, we'll get you out in a minute. So all this does is mark a behavior that you like. You can take things and break them down into little tiny pieces to teach them what you want them to do. To work a clicker, you cannot just pick up a clicker and start working it. The dog has no idea what it is. You have to charge it first. To charge it, easy thing to do. And you only have to charge it once. Don't let them think you have to charge. Don't let them tell you you have to charge it every time. Sit down on the floor with a handful of treats and 
Click it and give them a treat. Click it and give them a treat. So that they know when they hear that noise, it is followed by a treat. Go with no. I'm going to try again. She might just be being a stinker. No, she's heading to the door. <laughs> so click, treat. Click, treat. Click, treat. Do it six to ten times. That's all you have to do. Your clicker is now charged. Your dog does something you like. When you're teaching send to the mat, you get the mat out, your dog looks at the mat, click it. Dog has no idea why you just clicked it. Dog looks at the mat again, you click it again. Dog goes, oh, I look at that thing over there. I get a cookie. I like this. I'm going to look at it again. You click it. I'm going to look at it again. You click it. I'm going to look at it again. You don't click it. What do you mean you didn't click it? I looked at it all those other times you clicked it. I'm going to go over and step on it. Yes, I like that. And you click that. You step it up to see how that works. You look at it, that's good. Any type of interaction with what you want them to interact with, if you're trying to teach them something like that, you click. Then after the dog understands that and has milked you out of six or seven cookies because you because they figured it out, then you step it up. Now you want more than a look. So if they step on it, that's good. So you get that. Or they paw at it. Then once they get that, then you want them to stand on it completely. Then you want them to sit on it or you want them to lie down on it. When they go to the mat on their own, when you're, cook when you're throwing those cookies and you don't throw the cookie and they go on the mat by themselves, click it. Yes, good job. When they're jumping on you and you tell them off and they sit, click. Yes, good sit. It's click for good things that you like. You can click any behavior you like. And if you consistently click the behavior that you like, they'll figure it out really, really fast. It's a way to communicate with an animal that we don't speak their language. They will, they will pick it up really, really fast. Possibilities are endless when, you, when they understand clicking. How often do you have to reward them with the actual cookie? If you click, you reward. Okay. So, okay. so the click just marks it instantly and then you reward? And yes. And you can wait, you know, like... If you, if you can click, oh, I'm out of cookies. Oh, let's go get one. Good yeah. job. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, you want to try to be as quick with your treat, as like follow that click mm -hmm. with the treat pretty quick. After a while, when they understand it, good job, I'm out of cookies, let's go get one. They know it's coming. Okay. Trust me, anybody that does this will accidentally click when they don't mean to. Ever done that? Raise your hand if you've ever done that. Yeah, guess what? You <laughs> click, you treat. Even if it was a bad click, you never want to devalue this cue. Never devalue this cue. So if you accidentally click when you didn't mean to, they get a freebie. The treat can be made, but the timing of the click is Has, Yes, yes. And it is so much easier to do this than to do an audible yes. Because by the time you breathe in and say the word, microseconds have passed. This is, this is just really, really fast. And it marks it. Oh, that's what I did right. Where's a good place to get it for her? She has them out here. She has them out here. And how does it work in a class situation? Amazingly class? well. They know that you wish to her. <laughs> what? They know each clicker? They know when it's coming from their person. Okay. Everybody will have a box clicker in my class. They don't pay attention to the other clicks which is amazing to me. They are focused on their person and they know, and we don't hear what they hear and there must be, every click must sound just a little bit different because it's amazing in a class situation. We don't have issues with eight people clicking. My dog's an older dog. Is it, I mean like 10. Can still learn it. There are some dogs that don't like the sound of it. They just don't. Um, older dog, I would use a box clicker, not a quiet clicker, um, just because their hearing isn't always the best at that age. I'm looking at a puppy so. in three months. That's why. Oh yeah, get a box clicker. <laughs> um, so, one of my favorite things 
I love, I wish I would, I wish I could teach everybody clicker, but when somebody's first starting out with a puppy and you're trying to teach them leash in the right hand, cookie in the left hand, tre you know, treats on your side, they're so coordinated, messed up, trying to get all of that to work together, you throw a clicker in their hand and, and they can't do it, it's too much. That's always my problem. Yeah. I have more of a problem with the clicker than the dog did. Right, but if you do it at home, if you do it at home and there's no leash involved in a lot of things, it's much easier. It's much easier to um, to work it because you can work it on the floor or or do whatever. And um, but just remember, if you click, it has to be followed by the reward, even if you didn't mean to do it. But it will help shape behaviors. It it does help shape behaviors. Or stop bad behavior. Positive behaviors stop bad behaviors. A clicker is not a command. I had someone tell me the other day, my dog was out running, so I went and got my clicker and went to the door and clicked. <laughs> no, a clicker is not a recall. A clicker does not say come. If you say come, and your dog does, then you click that. <laughs> it is not a command. So he said say it again, yes, and I will sure. come. Um, <laughs> So it is not, you don't click first. You command first or you teach first and then you click. The reason I ask that is a lot of people that have bad behavior in dogs are looking for ways to change that behavior or to stop that bad behavior because that's why, that's why they're, they're driving people crazy because they're doing something that is just so annoying. Right, so you replace that behavior with a good behavior. If I pull this out, my dogs are always more attentive to me. Oh, we're going to do something. If I pull this out with her mother, she offers me every behavior she knows. It's like a circus for five minutes. <laughs> she does sit down, roll over, sleep, spin, re, um, twist. She does everything she knows, and I just have to wait her out, and then when she's done, then we learn the new behavior. It's excitement. It's like, wow, they're going to work. We're going to do something fun. Your dogs love to work. Herding dogs, so many of you have herding dogs. They were bred to have a job. And what do we do with them now? Nothing. We do nothing with them. They're just there. No wonder they get in trouble. No wonder they chew things up. No wonder they do, it's a collar, sweetheart. <coughs> so does a clicker replace bad behavior? No. Good behavior replaces bad behavior. Just like jumping. Jumping is an undesirable behavior. Off. Sit. That sit replaces the jumping and that's the good thing. Do not pet your dog unless they're sitting. Sicily, sit. Sit. Yes, good girl. This puppy knew how to sit at six weeks, as did all of her litter mates. All it took was four people in one week when she was older to pet her without her sitting because they wouldn't listen to me. Oh, she's too cute. She doesn't have to sit. She was tiny. She was a fluff ball. She was 10 weeks old. She was adorable. I get it. But they wouldn't wait until she sat. And she was excited because people were coming to her. Now I have a kangaroo. And I'm constantly saying, uh-uh, sit. So you, it can be ruined that fast. It took me a long time to get a litter of eight puppies to sit in unison on command. Yeah, I know there's friends. It took me a long time. And in one week, it went out the door. In one week. So you have to just constantly work it. How long does it take you? How long did it take you to train your dog? Ruth, how long did it take you to train your dog? Still working. Still working yeah, I was on it. I keep retraining and retraining yes. because as I add a dog, it's that one has bad behavior and then they all want Oh, yeah. Ella's starting to jump now because this one jumps. Yes. So I, I understand what you're saying. So you just go back to reinforcing, you just go back to reinforcing the good things. And there are times when. When we are training, I tell everybody we use cookies because most dogs are food oriented or we use a toy with a squeaker. This is how I explain the cookies. Cookies are like training wheels on a bicycle. If you, hush, 
If you take the training wheels off a bicycle too soon, what happens? You crash. You fall, you crash. Take the cookies away too soon, and you crash that behavior. Eventually, we all learn to ride a two-wheeler without training wheels. Eventually, they will learn to do the behavior without a cookie. If I had Ella here, I would not have this treat bag on my side because the treats come out and her brain goes gone. She's just all about treats. And she pays more attention to the treat bag than she does to what I'm asking her on behaviors that she already knows. I only bring the treat bag out with her when I'm trying to teach her something new. Don't give up on the cookies too soon. Eventually, they'll go away. Eventually, you start fading them out. You only give the cookie every two or three times, and you slowly fade it out. But in the beginning, especially when you're teaching something new, you keep those cookies. They, yeah, they go through the wash machine, and they end up in the, the dryer because they're in your pockets all the time. But that's better than having to replace something because your dog chews something out because they're so bored that, that they can't do, they can't function. Okay. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break. It's 10 o'clock, so everybody can get some coffee, get another donut, use the restroom. I'm going to go over that book that you wrote your questions down, and when you come back, we're going to address those questions that you have, okay? All right. I have a question. My big problem now is my fenced-in area, I go to walk through to get to my front door, and the door opens. So now when I'm coming out with groceries or whatever, I got the spray bottle in this hand and treats in this hand because I don't want them to sit because the door opens in. So I'm teaching them to go back yes, and stay. That. It is such a process. I mean, it's, and they were the ones that I had were doing good, and now this one's just. So what you need to do is break her hands. away from the pack and teach her on her own. Then slowly take your other ones out one at a time and reinforce what they already know. It's hard if one doesn't do what they're supposed to do, then they all join in. You know when you have a party at your house with your kids and kids have friends over, they're likely to get in trouble and do things that they know they're not supposed to do. Dogs are no different. If one does something they're not supposed to do, the others look around and go, okay, I'm in. And they do it too. So break her off, teach her because she has no clue. Right, back is the only thing I can think of. Yeah, back would get them and away stay. from the door. Back and stay. And even stay. just back. Yeah. Even just back. You've done wait while I go through right. the door. Back her up, ask her to sit and wait while you go through the door. It doesn't even have to be a stay. She can follow you once you're through. Well, like I said, with that being in the front, I have that problem, and I have a problem with them rushing me, because they go to doggy door. So they beat me to that door. I mean, somebody's coming down my driveway. I don't hear them unless it's night. I see the headlights. And they are out there, and I'm there yelling, come on, come back, come back. I'm trying to get them to come back. And that, is, that has been the worst thing I can, is with that dog, is she just made all the other ones nuts. Yeah. So, you, I forgot all their so, so your concentration has to be with her because once yeah. she learns it and she does it, the other ones are go back to saying, yes, we have to wait. Okay. All right. So go ahead and get some coffee, go to the restroom, do whatever, and we'll come back and go over these other questions. <laughs>